Hi, I'm Mike Wagner, and I'm the Internal Medicine Ultrasound Education Director for the University of South Carolina. I'm going to be talking about simple tools and practical tips for teaching bedside ultrasound. Um, starting off with an oldie but goodie, I'm using um, washable markers to draw on the patient's body. Um, it's very customizable to your specific patients, whether or not they have or don't have pathology. Um, and it allows for great physical diagnosis, feedback, and quizzing, makes the students very interactive and engaged. Um, one disadvantage is that it's um, especially messy um, when you're using non-permanent markers um, uh, once the gel gets on there. Um, so that tends to limit its use. Uh, to get over that, we a lot of times will use this paper towel method where we'll um, use this as a readily available canvas, either in the clinic or in the hospital setting, even in the school. Um, and it's nice because you can also customize that to the patient's body habitus and pathology. And with a dark marker or pen, you can hold that up to the light and actually help out with uh, flipped orientations like the right upper quadrant or sub xiphoid view. I like this a lot, especially when um, working with students and residents in the hospitalized setting. Um, but just some cons, it's, it's limited duration of use because it's rapidly covered in uh, gel during the sessions and um, quickly sort of falls apart. And so um, another option is, is to take uh, sheets and, and laminate them, um, either leaving them blank or sort of pre-populating them with some standard uh, views. Uh, some pros on that is that um, it's neat, it's washable, it's reusable, uh, and they can serve as very simple and effective reminders on the uh, underlying um, anatomy as it relates to the surface anatomy. Uh, but one con is, is that obviously one size does not fit all for our patients, and um, you gotta remember to sort of bring them along with you, which I frequently forget. And so if you're having trouble with the right upper quadrant orientation, uh, especially the sub xiphoid view, the right upper quadrant, things that are sort of flipped on the screen. Um, I find this to be very helpful. Another uh, tip that you can use is if you're using pocket side ultrasound machines or uh, machines that use uh, tablets for screens. Uh, or phones for screens, you can uh, line those screens up uh, so that things are anatomic. Uh, and so um, those small ones can be adjusted and it's fun, it's kind of like Superman vision and the patients really seem to like this uh, very technical sort of look inside their body. Uh, and it also allows for visualiz visualization of uh, movement and um, as well as the underlying structures. Uh, one con though is, is that although most people find this to be very helpful, uh, a few people have told me this is even uh, more disorienting. So uh, another con to keep in mind is, is that some machines can get um, very warm uh, and you don't want to get your uh, tablet or phone uh, covered in, in gel. So in my opinion, the most helpful tool is actually a, an ultrasound probe model um, with a model of the beam intact. And so uh, I find that like pilots, when we're teaching complex 3D spatial terms and principles, trying to talk about them can be really frustrating to both a learner and teacher. Uh, and I find that the most important analogy, um, that of the uh, ultrasound probe and the flashlight, uh, is really driven home when you use a, a tool like this at the bedside. Just as a quick aside, uh, one tip from ultrasound Jedi masters like Dr. Sony at Texas or Dr. Tierney at Abbott Northwestern is to use a laser pointer when trying to teach knobology, particularly in machines that have crowded interfaces like this one. Uh, like the probe tool, this helps you keep your own hands occupied and forces the student to drive the machine for him or herself. So talking about the different uh, probe types, um, there's three different versions shown here. The first is a uh, cardboard version that's uh, laminated uh, and glued to a popsicle stick. Um, and as uh, ghetto as it looks, it was actually my favorite probe when I travel as it tra uh, packs pretty well. And um, the second one is um, very similar to the first one and it's all in one piece. And um, it also, just like the first one, has the markings on it to explain what 16 centimeters of depth actually looks like on a patient, which is uh, helpful for those of us who grew up in the US. The uh, version on the right, the final version, so to speak, uh, for now anyway, is uh, clear acrylic super glued uh, to a uh, clear acrylic ruler uh, used for scale and, and support. 
and uh, air dry clay for the handle. And so this allows flexibility uh, of the laminated sheets, but also the easy movement when flipping the probe for orientation in the coronal plane. Uh, overall, this is my favorite probe to, to work with, and it's the best all-around tool. Uh, they, the downside is just right now the version I have is kind of fragile, and that third one is actually the fourth probe because the third one actually broke. Um, so here's a, an example of some residents teaching some of our international exchange students uh, ultrasound. And uh, you can see they're not grabbing the probe from them, and they're using the probe tool, uh, which was uh, definitely a helpful uh, tool, um, particularly with the language barrier. So here are just some different examples of using the clear acrylic uh, probe and the niceness that uh, it allows us to kind of combine different methodologies in teaching. So for here, diaphragm. Just an example of diaphragm here. And then using this, this lever coming down here. And then kidney right here. Kidney, liver, and then vertebral bodies. On here with the psoas muscle. Right there. So when you here. Sometimes it doesn't project very well. I think we tried different takes of that. And I think this is one more. Down here, so his normal anatomy looks like this. And so medially you have his vertebral bodies, you have his kidney which sits here, you have the liver which sits here, and then you have the diaphragm which sits here. We're going to have our ultrasound probe which is going to have a, create a two-dimensional plane of cut. We're taking 3D structures and making it two-dimensional. And so the, the, depending on how it looks will depend on the beam and angle of the probe, right? So this is rocking the probe back and forth like this. This is fanning the probe like this. This is twisting the probe, rotating it like this. So when we're going, and then sort of moving it along the body is going to be sliding the probe, right? And so if we want to find the kidney, we're going to work in the coronal plane coming across the body like this. And in order to get the longest axis from here to here, we can't have the beam like this, and we can't have the beam like that, because that'll give us a sort of foreshortened cut of the kidney. Make sense? And so this is the anatomy here. The green's going to correspond with the probe marker side. The probe marker side always corresponds with the screen marker side here. Okay? And what we're going to look for is the, the plane of cut with ultrasound beam is going to look like this. But on the screen, since this is the screen marker side, probe marker side looks like screen marker side, this is going to be our plane of cut. We come from here. You can't really see that. Like this. Does that make sense? Okay. So here's kidney. This is the vertebral bodies, this is liver here, and then this is the diaphragm. So, so like this. Here. Right before Thanksgiving. And then just like that. Okay. Good? Thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. Keep a nice smile. There you go. Thanks to Vic Rao for recording that for us. Down here, so and then um, also here's an example of the sub xiphoid. Um, so you use a, a live version of a echo image here. You label it. Keep your orientation in terms of patient left, patient right, screen orientation, probe markers, that sort of thing. And just overlay it. Uh, and I find this to be very helpful. I'm moving slow enough and you get the idea this is more right the same. okay and then here's LV LA mitral valve right in there that's it so all this stuff is delivered right in here and then this is the right side this is the left side this over here is towards the apex this down here is towards the base here, 
the base, lose the apex. Good? Got it. All right. So moving right along. Uh, so how to build one of your own. Um, this is really all the equipment that you need, which you can get at any um, craft store, hardware store. I used the um, model clay that air dries, so that way I didn't have to worry about sticking anything in the oven. Um, super glue, you can use a popsicle sticks or painter sticks or rulers or yard sticks. Um, this uh, acrylic plastic is poster cover, you cut it with trauma shears. Um, that's really about it. Um, you can make your ultrasound beam to scale if you want. Um, I did for the pocket ultrasound device that we use a lot um, just to keep things um, simple and, and, and to scale, but you don't have to do that by any stretch. This is just a cutout of cardboard here, and uh, this is the first version. Make sure you, uh, make, sure you uh, make the hole for the popsicle stick before you let the clay dry. A rookie mistake that I made the first time and then uh, make sure it's laminated uh, no matter what type of probe you make make sure that the surface that you use uh, allows for um, um, easy drawing with uh, dry erase markers that you can um, flip the orientation things like that um, and I find that that orientation that left right orientation that's utilized by a lot of simulators is actually very helpful for beginners when you're working in three dimensions so Anyway, I think that's it. I uh, hope you find this video uh, helpful and that these tools improve the uh, ultrasound education for you and your learners. Uh, just keep the movement moving forward and happy scanning.